don't know. <laughs> just uh, <laughs> we want to know, and we really that's really our focus. When the only time I know that stuff is when you guys point it out to me. I was like, oh, well, oh, that's interesting. And uh, we do a we do a really good job of compartmentalizing what, what our jobs are, and, and our players do a good job of that. And I think that's why you get to do those kind of things. You're not well, in th but you know, you always have that tendency to try to peek ahead or. We don't look behind very much, only just uh, um, keep improving on some of the things we're doing. That's how we look behind. But, you know, these guys are 1-0, uh, and oh, and 1-0 and oh today is getting ready for tomorrow. So uh, we, do a, we do a really, really good job of keeping things in a tight box during the season. And, and I think it really helps the development and it helps the uh, guys kind of way they get better on a daily basis really shows as we go forward in the, in the year. You've called Tyson Dagenhart your security blanket before. What are the qualities of a good basketball security blanket? Uh, just you know what you're going to get. Reliability and uh, uh, you know a good friend of mine, Bill Walker, who coaches at Missouri S&T or I think it's A&T. They changed the name of it so don't blame me if you're not knowing my buddy's school. Uh, he pointed out, he's like, your guys just do whatever it takes to win, you know, because sometimes I'm too close to it and I don't realize it. You know, he came and watched us play and he, he's like, you know, Tyson's freshman in the year and he's out there taking charges and he's, oh, I'll go post up, oh, I'll make a pass, all day, whatever it takes. Well, we got a whole bunch of guys do, that do that and, and we're getting more and more guys figuring all that out and, you know, the development's coming with a lot of these guys because of the because of the role model that Shave and Tyson and Max and Najee are, you know, and Lucas and all these guys have been with us for a while are, are showing them. And that's, uh, that's a pretty good feeling. Cause you know, when you're, when you're showing up to a game, you wanna be, you wanna know, okay, I'm gonna get this out of this guy and this, and it's not about made shots, missed shots or scoring or this. Uh, you just know what you're gonna get from those guys night in, night out. And when you get a, whole group where you're like, okay, I reach in there, I know what I'm going to get. I, I reach to this guy, I know what I'm going to get. And that's what makes it so hard in November to try to, you know, get your substitution patterns and get guys in the games because a lot of guys, you don't know what you're going to get yet. You know, and it's not their fault, part of it, because you just haven't seen them up there in games. And games, you know, different guys have different reactions to the game environments. Chibuzo feels like he's getting more comfortable every single right. game. Is that just that maybe the new sights and sounds of everything, or is it something that you and your staff have been working on? Yeah, I mean, it, we knew, you know, I think I, I stood firm on that hill where, you know, those first two games were a bit of a struggle, and I, I knew what we're getting. I think it was one of you guys that said, oh, you're changing the lineup, oh, Chibuzo. I'm like, no, not Chibuzo. <laughs> like, I know what I'm going to get, you know, and uh, I think er, the longer he's in the system, the better he's going to get. He, you know, we're going to coach him better. We're going to keep because we're going to know him better. You got to know your guys to be able to coach him well. And um, we're finding out what his strengths are, where he's comfortable, what how he, what best way he responds to coaching, how, how to make him a better player, what plays are best for him, where he likes to get us, all those things. And so we're doing a better job of that, and that's helping him. And he, his teammates are doing a great job of, you know, and they're figuring him out too. So it's all. It all comes together, and it's just going to continue to grow with Chibuzo. You know, BJ was talking about, you know, Tyson Dagenhart, his three-point percentage isn't probably where he would want it or where you said at the beginning of the year. He's a great three-point shooter. Last year he was good. Can that be because of, like, strenuous minutes? Have you noticed yeah, that? Yeah, you know, there were some films early where, you know, that horse has been road hard, mm -hmm. put away wet. You know, it was, it was, I was not a good cowboy there. That was, uh, but the, the the circumstances dictated that, and we're doing a better job of that now. But it's hard, like, you know, it's hard to take those security blankets off in, in stressful situations. And but you know, I'm, we're growing more as a team, like I said, and there's more minutes to be had for those other guys because they're earning. Where have you seen? Mo grow the most the last couple weeks. His attitude. Yeah. That that I think I said that in the post game. And your you know your minutes will follow your attitude. You're not gonna. Uh, it's not gonna be that way around ever. And uh, at least not in this program. You know because it's a life lesson that they have to learn and they can control that. You can't control the other stuff.
and you know he's a very very valuable person you know because we don't have you know Max is pretty quiet uh, Tyson or uh, Marcus is super quiet and uh, we need more guys that, that have that energy that enthusiasm and when he plays like that he's really good and I saw some of that against St. Louis after the dunk yeah. there was great energy and emotion that's what we want out of him and that's what we need out of him yeah. and uh, so when he got when he has that and brings that to the to the gym it's so valuable and he underestimates and he doesn't know you know he doesn't know what a value that is to our program you know we tell him and tell him but now I think he's starting to understand that a little bit more not, not, not talking about record or whatever, but just when you think back to December 12th last year, December 12th this year, do you feel like you're, you guys are a little further ahead or that, you're, that the, the, the things you guys are doing now is showing that maybe there's more room to even for continued growth, I guess, moving forward? Or? Yeah, I couldn't, I mean, I really couldn't think back. At, uh, I don't remember where we were. Where we, I just remember we were winning one-point games over and over again. And, you know, and I so I, I don't think I knew where that team could go. I didn't know where, you know, I knew we were competitive, I knew we were tough, I knew we were, we had some great qualities. This team has different qualities than that team. Uh, whether it has a higher upside, well, you know, we'll see. But um, I do love the leadership of this team. And I, and I think when you break down great teams that we've had here, it all goes back to that. It really does. The, the leadership you have within the, the players, and we've got some, some well, when I think we look back historically, we're going to go, man, those guys were amazing leaders. And that, and that makes all the difference in the world. You're saying some of those guys are kind of quiet. So how do you Yeah, they, they are. And we have we actually do something pretty often. Uh, we have a group called the Captain's Class. And, you know, we've been spending a lot of time together. And, and we, we work through some stuff. And, you know, we talk about leadership and what it looks like. And you don't have to be – sometimes your leaders aren't the guys that you think would – where they'd be the rah rah, you know, those aren't always your best leaders. And, you know, I learned that over the years. And and you can't make someone your a leader. You can make them a better leader if they already are that. But you can't say, I need you to be a leader. You know, I tried putting a square peg in the round hole with Anthony Drimmick. He was a guy that just needed to go do his job at a high, high level. And leadership was for Jeff Loriaga on that team, not for Anthony. And Anthony did his thing and did it at a high level and did it his own way. But to make him the captain it wasn't right. But I, and I learned that that year. So that, that's, that's been a big part of what we do is to try to develop those guys. And, and, you know, I thought those guys did an amazing job at St. Louis because they'd been through the environment. You know, the, the, back to Billy Walker, he was like, your team was so composed. And so they didn't get too high, they didn't get too low. They were just composed all night long, and their huddles were great. And, and I put that on those guys before the game, and they handled it. And you know, because I can try and do what I want, but it doesn't make the difference that they can make, and they did make. Is there a difference between developing players in season and developing them out of the season in terms of the way you approach it, how you handle it? I mean, you wouldn't mess with a golf swing or a home run swing maybe in the middle of the season. Yeah. That's oh yeah, yeah. Important. There's there's definitely cycles to what you do that way. There's, there's technique cycles that we use in the summer. You're know, like, okay, let's work on this. And we work on our weaknesses a lot in the summer. Dur during this time of year, yeah, you want a free mind, you want them. There might be some slight technical things that we change, and we've worked, we're working on a couple right now with a couple guys, but those are really, really slight because you want them with confidence, you want them looking at the play, making the play, not thinking about technique or, you know, that's why we got to know our plays inside and out, so we're not thinking that way. We're, you know, so there is a big, but but I think the philosophy is the same with development, and that philosophy is extreme patience uh, makes instant results. It's crazy that way, you know. So it's almost counterintuitive, and, uh, but you just have to have a patience with these guys because now in the season you get to the point where you want to get it squeezed really quickly because we need it now, but you still have to have that patience about you and because you know, the harder you squeeze it, the less lemonade you get. Playing a tough schedule uh, in the start of non-conference play, how is this experience going to help the team kind of grow further down the stretch? Yeah, I, I mean, I think every game has helped us grow. And 
for different reasons. And like I said about the St. Louis, I mean, that was a great environment. That was a high level game. That was a, a team that, you know, you're going to face during the season where they're coming off a tough loss. They're going to be juiced up They're You know, I mean, those are the circumstances that you face in, in league. And for us to be able to stare that down and do what we did and, and accomplish the mission in a, in a way that, you know, I wouldn't have predicted we could have held that team to 52 points. I really, you know, if you would have asked me that the day before, I would have said, you're crazy, or told me that. Because the, when you watched them on film, you're like, whew, they got the best passer in the country. They got one of the best shooters. They got some of the best athletes. They got, so, you know, and they're the best rebounding team we faced. So all those things were stacking up, and you're like, ooh, this is a tough challenge. So our guys really chunked it out and and uh, got, got something done on the road that was pretty special. But to answer your question, all these games have given us something that we've really improved on and that, and that we're, you know, it's helping us grow. You know, Jace, he's older than Tyson. I uh, thought about it because he went on the key yeah. mission. Yeah, isn't that crazy? What do you and the staff do when you have guys on missions? I don't think you're, are you This okay? is my first. I mean, do you text him and say, hey, man, how's it going? Um, I mean, no, you're, uh, there's there's rules of what you can do. Well, when, yeah. You know, he, he would send us an email update. And we communicated with his parents a lot. And, yeah, but I think that at Boise, is this my first return missionary? Or maybe did Kasdan, Kasdan, I think, came back and he was there for a year, you know. But um, yeah, so it's a different, you know, different experience, but I love it. You know, the maturity that he gained, his body changed. I mean, he, you know, he's he's a great kid and he loves hoops. And, um, the, you know, he had some stories when he was a little kid at Burley is that, you know, he traveled with his AU team and they thought he was, he was two years younger than everybody and that he was just the kind of a mascot guy and it was always tough on him, you know. Uh, but he was actually older than the guys he was playing with. He was just kind of a late bloomer. So those years probably helped him a ton with the maturity and don't know if he could be doing it now if it was two years ago. Just he wouldn't have been tough enough, mature enough. And you just grow up in situations like that. And he grew up a ton. It feels like you guys aren't anywhere close to where you are without him. Like he's been a huge piece to this puzzle where maybe you weren't factoring that in. At least media wasn't necessarily. Yeah. but. I don't know if you guys have this record right now without Jason oh, White. Oh, without a doubt. They're, you know, because everything's so fragile and everything's such a fine line. You know, you look outside the top. Well, anymore, you used to be able to say that and say, oh, you look outside the top 10 in the country and, you know, uh, they're going to roll guys nine times. But it's not that way anymore. It's like every night is a fine line at every place. And, you know, uh, and so you're right that the fine line might be on the other side if we, if, if we didn't have him. And, you know, the interesting thing for me, too, is every year when, you know, I can, I mean, I we go over it and over it and look at the different lineups and, you know, I make a card up every year about roles and what I think guys will be doing and I date them every year and I keep them every year. They're so interesting to look back on because every single year you have a guy that maybe you thought was even going to redshirt and ends up being a guy that, I mean, you know, I mentioned Jeff earlier, but he was a guy that I, he ended up starting for three and a half years. He wasn't on by I look back at the notes before that and you're like, no way. So you just got to look at things with an open mind and all right, let's see what they, you know, what the game and what their daily habits and what they're telling us needs to be done. And, you know, they, they act like I make the lineup and I make the subs. I don't. They do by how they play and how they show up every day and how they compete and hit the side button, please. And, uh, uh, a lot going on in the world today. So, um, so th th that's the thing is they have control of, of their careers a lot more than they think. And we, that's where you know we want to teach these guys that that's the all great players know that they have that. And so he took control of it with his work, with his work ethic, with his attitude, with his toughness. You yeah. know, and because we, we've been on him, we, we knew we had to develop some guys to be the backup point and get a lot of minutes at the point and help this team that way. And uh, we coached him hard, you know, and uh, he's, he handles it and he's, he actually embraces it. So that's what, you know, that's what's been great about Jace. Mm -hmm. Thank you.